What's going on, everybody? Today, I want to answer another one of those questions that I get asked a lot, which is, how do I work on as many different things that I do? And I want to show you what I think is probably the greatest tool for creativity, for concepting, for ideation that nobody knows about. And it's an application called Milanote. And Milanote is really just, well, it's sort of like digital sticky notes, because for me, my brain doesn't work in a way where Google Docs or Evernote or things like that really work for me. I, it just, I don't work in that sort of ver vertical, verbal, linear format, right? Like I need a, something like sticky notes. I need to be able to move things around. I need to be able to rethink things. I need to be able to share it with other people, sort of see it on a big screen and be able to do things like that to just be able to work through my ideas. But it also, I need some place where I can work through and easily capture a whole lot of ideas. So Milanote is an app that's free to get started. I think you can get like up to 100 notes for free before, and it's a, it's a pretty cheap subscription. But the thing is, you can use it through their website. They have a great app that you can download for your computer. They also have an iPhone app, and just this week, I'm pretty sure they released an Android app. So again, the ability to be able to work with it in a lot of different ways. But this is, for me, is really the secret to be able to capture a lot of ideas and work with them really organically. So what I want to do today is just sort of share... A masterclass. Share again what are the tips, the tricks, the workflow, how I have it set up, and, and even some of the basics of how to use this tool in the hopes that, again, I think this is going to give you another tool, another way to be able to work that's going to let you be more creative, be able to come up with better ideas, and hopefully be able to make it easier than what it's been for you in the past. I'm going to assume that by now you set up an account and you've downloaded the desktop app because that's what it is that we're going to use here today. So whenever you open it, this is what you're presented with. And I think this is where a lot of people get stuck with a lot of tools like this because these, I don't know what, they're sort of like open world tools. Whenever you get there, you have all this big blank space and there's not a whole lot going on there. And I think a lot of people just don't know where to start. But for today, we want to start with the basics. So we've got this sort of little row of things that are down here along the side. Now, a couple of these is we have notes, we have links, and we have to-do lists. Now, these I just sort of think of like they're sticky notes. Because in notes, what you can do is just what it says. You can go in and be able to just type anything in there, and it's just going to capture it. And now I can take that, I can move it around, I can do all sorts of things with it. And actually, there's a lot more formatting in here. So I can do, I can make it into a headline, make it bold, make it italic. I can make it into a bullet list, a numbered list, a number of just sort of simple things like that. I can put links on it. And again, I can do strike throughs. I can put in little snippets of code and even quotes. So a nice number of little things that are just sort of hidden in here. And also just for organization, if I want to do it, I can color code it. So if I want to make these this one yellow so that stands out, I can easily do that. Now, the other thing here is with URLs, you can do just what you think you would, which was if you have a website that you want to be able to remember, there's something that, you know what, you think is really important, something you want to hold on to. I use this for a lot of research so that whenever there are websites or different things I want to reference, this is where I put them. And so whenever you do that, you'll see the card automatically converts to having the link, a little bit of description, different things like that. And so again, it's just a nice sort of easy way to be able to go through and do this. And tasks are just like to-do lists. So again, I can just go through, put those in there, and whenever I hit return, that what it's going to do is it's going to ask me to be able to put multiples in here. Now, there's other things that will sometimes pop up. You see this little line here across the bottom? This will say, do I want to add a title to this list? And in this case, sure. And I'll call it whatever, to-do list one. Just so if I have multiple to-do lists, I can keep them separate. Now, you're going to see the same thing happen here, and I'll see if I can actually get it to trigger that with a text one, where if this gets long enough, it'll actually ask me if I want this to, con to convert this into a long-form text field. And of course, in this case, there it goes. Okay, it popped up there at the bottom. So again, confirm to long form. And if I say yes, then it turns it into a bit more of like its own screen. This is going to be something more like what you would see in a Word doc or, or different things like that, right? So it's a nice, easy way to be able to have these sort of three things that are there. Now, there are a few other, there's sort of a, the only design element you have here are arrows. So at some point, again, if I want to be able to make these into a process to be able to explain to people which one you do, Again, I can go through and be able to put just kind of like the simple arrow in here to be able to do that. And like I said, that, that's really the only kind of design element that you have with this. And you can customize them a little bit, really only deciding by checking or unchecking that box if you want an arrow at the beginning or end of it. And it, again, simple enough, easy enough way to be able to do things. 
Now, from here, there are basically organizational containers that you can then work inside of, which are these boards and columns. I'll start with columns because that's going to be relevant to what this is. A column, whenever you put, drag it out, is just sort of like it's an organizational container. It's like a bulletin board or something you could pin things to. So what this allows you to do is to be able to then put different things in here. So if for this particular task, I want a to-do list, I want a website, and I want some copy. Now I can contain those into one simple group. And here again, if I want to be able to color code that, take the color off of there. We'll make this one red. So now again, what this allows me to do is to be able to just kind of quickly go in and to be able to say, okay, well, if I'm working on multiple different things, make those different colors, give them different titles. So now all of a sudden I start to have a nice, easy structure to be able to work with things. I use this for doing my talks. I use it for writing articles. I, write, I use this for doing my podcast where I can use this inside of something to really kind of contain different thoughts. And when we get to the workflow section, I'll sort of show you how you can use that as a bit more of a power user. But these just really, again, will let you to be able to collect these sort of multiple notes and different things in here. And this is why I like this is because now I can have a bunch of different thoughts that are in here. And what I can do is I can reorder them. I can move them around. I can switch the order so that if they want to do something different with that, I can do all of that. And that is just a really simple way of doing things. Now, this is nice whenever you're working on one project, one thought, one thing. But what if you're working on multiples? And that's where this boards option comes in. Because for boards, what this allows you to do is to think of this like a project. So for this one, I'll call this one class because we're doing a class here. And you'll notice whenever you hit return, a couple things happened. One is that it picked a color, but then it also put a graphic in there. All of these are, again, customizable. So in this case, I said, you know, like, I really want this to be yellow. And, you know, what? honestly, I, I don't like that icon. I don't think that looks very good. So now whenever I do this fly out, what it's going to do is it's going to go out and try to recommend some different icons. And I don't know what these are sort of military look in some different letters. I don't know. I'm not loving any of those. So let's type in the word class and see what it comes back with. And of course, it comes back with mostly the same thing. So let's try something different. Let's try teach and see where that goes. Oh, see, now this is the point where you screwed up because you wait on the internet. Okay. And I like that one better. So now what I can do is I can say, okay, this is a container. So the three of these I now want to put inside of this project. And I can either copy and paste them in or cut and paste them in, or I can take those and just drag them and they drop in. So now I have this little class board. Whenever I open that up, now there's all that material that I had that's over here in this sort of pasteboard. I can drag that out. Easy enough. Now, the way I'm going to be able to navigate it now, as you can see up here at the beginning, up here at the top, there is now this sort of class folder that just by clicking back, now I can jump back out of that. So just a simple way of being able to organize that. But now if there are multiple things that I want to be able to do, so if I'm going to do another one of these and I want to have a different outline there, what I can then do is, again, just pull out a different one of these, and now I can very simply be able to start to do those. And again, the same thing, you can do columns for these as well. So now if I want to be able to do that, now I can drag that out, and now these are... These will obviously be my classes. But so this it just it's a really nice organizational tool to be able to do that. And I, I use this, that part of it, really just for thinking and for doing different things like that. Now, the good part here, though, too, is going to be they also have the ability to add images and to be able to upload files. Now, you can copy and paste them directly in or you can add them there. But the other thing you may be saying is like, look, whenever I come into this, I'm not sure how I want to be able to set this up. So the thing is, is whenever you delete it and you have a blank canvas, you see these templates that just popped up here. This is a really great way to be able to start with this, because what you can do is be able to say, you know what, actually, you know what, I want to do a mood board. So it'll automatically populate a number of these things. So now there's the, here we have a board. We have a board for fonts, a number of different photos. OK, well, maybe I want an advertising brief. Well, now we'll see here we have a number of columns, photos, to-do lists, a bunch of things that have already been populated in. Again, we can see where there's animated GIFs. We have colors that have been put in here. So, okay, that might be nice. Well, what about if I'm doing a photo shoot? So now there's reference. Here's a maps link. Here's location images. And, again, you can go through and use these, and they have more templates. So, again, there's a whole thing. These are searchable. There's a ton of different categories that are in here. So, again, for whatever it is you want to do, you can use these as a starting point. So I'll look at creative direction, and, you know what, let's do an inspiration library. And, yeah, I like that one. So now whenever I come in, the content that was there obviously gets dropped away. But here, it's just simple. I can drag these sort of images in. This is all set up. 
And it's a really easy way to get started. But that's the thing is it's just that simple to be able to get started. Now, whenever you have this all set up, there are also a few things you can do. One is that I love is that you can actually work with other people. And so you can invite someone to edit, which means they can come in and make their own changes. You can invite people just to view or leave comments so that this is still your work. You just want people to be able to kind of give thoughts on something like that. Or again, you can just send them a link for them to be able to see it. I love being able to do this because that's the best part about being creative is this sort of collaboration. So whenever I'm in here, and again, you can have a bunch of people that are together, and especially at times like this, whenever suddenly everybody has to work remote, the ability to be able to go in, you can see everybody else's cursor. You can see what's actually going on with these things. You can work together on this sort of stuff, have a Zoom link open and be able to come in here and work. It, it gives you this really great collaboration space to be able to come in and do this stuff. So again, I think that's another one here that's just a really nice way of doing those sort of things to be able to work. But like I said, these sort of give you the basics around that. And the other nice part is, hey, if you don't like any of this stuff and it's not working for you, just drag it into the trash and you can start over. So just a really simple way to be able to work with things. Now, let's get into a little bit more of my workflow and how I actually use this tool. So this is, this is actually the way I have it set up right now. And there's all sorts of things that are in here. And I have things for my podcast that I'm working on, my talks and presentations. My wife runs a digital magazine for emerging fashion designers. This is where we collaborate in here. So she has all the different issues. We have different articles. There's back here, their to-do list of what it is that we actually need to be able to do. So again, it just gives us a really nice and easy way so that as you go into this, there are different ways of doing things like editorial calendars. You can see that there. We can do for here's, again, for a particular designer so that all the different assets and the photos that are in there are all in one kind of nice, easy place to be able to work with. But again, it just gives you a really easy to be able to work with that. We just did a trip. And so whenever we went into this trip, here's the entire you know calendar that we had of everything we were gonna do. Again, it was an easy place for us to be able to go in, collaborate it. We did the trip with my parents, could share it with them and show it to them. And so again, it's just, it's funny how much more than work I've started doing in this. But what I want to do is when I talk about workflow is to actually go in, well, let's start with the simpler one is sort of talks and presentations. And the way that I like to work is to be able to kind of have content in different stages. This is how I'm able to work on so many things at a time. And so what I have is that I'll make a template. If this is something I'm going to do a lot, if it's something where I know I'm gonna give a lot of talks, I know I'm gonna do the podcast, then what I wanna be able to do is just sort of come in and set up the skeleton of what do I wanna use every single time. So I know every single time I need to think about what's the theme, what's the title, if there's some reference articles, my intro is about the same, and then I have a few different sections for a talk. Again, it's just an easy way for me to come in, grab this. So all I'll do is just literally grab that template, duplicate it, drop it in, and start working on it. Now, ideas are really just that. These are titles. These are things that I think at some point would make a good talk. And I just have captured them in here to have them, but I haven't really had time to work on them. Now, upcoming, these are ones that I'm actually working on. These are talks that are in progress. So this is a webinar that I have coming up on Start Doing Remote Leadership. So you can see, I pulled a couple of reference articles just to be able to get some ideas. And these different sections, and you can zoom out, so I'll zoom out there a little bit. So now what I can see is, okay, what's the setup? I wanna talk about the challenges, I wanna talk about the benefits. I wanna talk about being deliberate in this doing work, doing culture, feedback, trust, and then final thoughts. And what this allows me to do is before I go into keynote, before I do anything, I can come in and start to rough in one of these talks. And now this talk's pretty simple, so that one's not that complicated. The one I was meant to do this year, like how design live, this one's a bit more complicated because it's just, there's a lot more ideas in here. So again, having a title, what were the different formats? So for each section, I wanted to propose a problem word, an insight, a story, and an exercise. Now you can see for this, these are a bit more kind of, one is standardized so that there's that sort of structure that goes through here. It allows me to organize that talk. And then down here below is just, again, a bunch of different ideas. These are things I don't know where it is they go, but I just like to have them up on the board to be able to sort of figure them out. So this is the way all of my talks start, is to be able to do it in this sort of rough outline. Now, the podcast is a little more complicated because this is something that, again, I, I want to be able to capture a lot of different ideas. So here again, there's a template that I have and reference articles. The intro to the show is pretty much always the same. What's the setup? Meaning, how am I gonna start this episode? A blank space to be able to drop the content in. You know, What's the final thought to be able to finish the show and then do a wrap up? Again, fairly simple way, but it, I use that format all the time. 
Now, the red section here for me are raw ideas. These are literally just, hey, I think this would be an interesting title or topic for a show. And that's all I've done is I had some random brain thought, dropped it in there, said, great, let me hold on to that. Rough means that there is some part of this that, again, I think I've started to put a little bit more into it. So here I've taken the basic template, and most of the time all I'll do is I'm going to go in and just, again, start to drop in these sort of sections to be able to help me think through what should the sections of the show be. But that's all that rough is, right, is it's really just that's as much work as I've done on it is to be able to take it that much further. Now, again, some of these other ones that you're going to see whenever we get into those, these ones probably the need polish. Of course, that one is not it. Let's do this one. Okay, now these are the ones where now I've gone in and some of the sections have more content in it. I've started to put more substance in around some of these. And so, again, these are the ones that are starting to come together a little bit more. They feel like there's a little bit more there. And so, again, you know, I feel like this is something I can really start to dig into more because I feel like these sections are in a really good place. I feel like this is the story I want to tell. Now it's just actually going in and creating that. Whenever this is done, then what I do is I drop it into this bucket, in which right now I just recorded a show, so it's empty. But these are the ones whenever I'm kind of feeling like, okay, look, I've got one that's ready to go. Well, let's go in and look at one of these that's actually – this is an actual show after it was finished. So, again, there are a few reference articles that I used, the intro, the setup. And for me, I just sort of use these, like, cue cards that whenever I'm doing the show, I have this screen up, and I can just sort of go through and reference these as thoughts, as notes, as whenever I want to talk. But for me, the way that I present, the way I like to talk, I like to keep it organic. But here again, that's what this allows me to do is to be able to come in, move these around, get different ideas, do things like that. But that's the way for me that it ends up working. Is And so, again, it's this sort of top view that has all these different sections of different things that I'm working on. And then I'm able to drill down into each one of these to be able to get more specific. But this sort of workflow for me of having the raw idea, roughing it in, polishing it, and then finishing it allows me to work on so many things at once. Because that's the thing is maybe I have a conversation on something. And I'm like, wow, that'd be a great show. And I had it in here. I can pull that out of it, work on it, and get it ready to go. But this is how I can keep a pipeline. This is how I can also really keep my ideas because that was the other part of it for me I always struggled with was I didn't want to lose what I was actually thinking about. So this is a great way to be able to do it. But here's the thing I would say. Figure out whatever works for you. Figure out what are those things that you feel like are going to be the best for you and figure out whenever you do it, how are you going to be able to make this work for you? How What are these sort of formats that you want to be able to use? What are the things that you think are going to be able to work really well because whenever you start to figure those out, then again, I think what you're going to be able to do is start to figure out how do you work through this stuff. And and for me, the ability to just work like this makes the work whenever I go to design it that much better because it's in that much better of a place. So like I said, just some simple tips and tricks to be able to help with that. Hopefully that stuff will help. So that's really sort of the deep dive of the masterclass into that. Now, that's why I said it's just it's not a complicated tool there's not a, a lot to it and like i said i think the basics are pretty basic but as you can see there's a lot of different ways you can use it there's a lot of different ways you can customize it there's a lot of different ways that you can take those few simple elements and make them into some pretty complicated and really powerful ways to be able to help you work but that's the thing i would tell you to do is just like all these sort of things just start trying it take your next project take you know some pages out of your moleskin or out of your field notes or something like that and try to transfer them into that format and see how do they work. Because that's why I said, for me, that was the change that made all the difference for me. It was the ability to have them in that form when I can work with them. I can rearrange them. I can bring in different inspiration. I can bring in different reference. I can hold on to ideas. Even that alone, where it was like, oh, that's a really good idea. What did I think I wanted to do there again? And so, again, that ability to be able to do that and to have this be sort of your place where you can come and create and think and work out your ideas, for me, has made all the difference. And so, like I said... Just go in, try it out, figure out what the things are that work for you. But I'm betting with a little bit of investment, a little bit of time and giving it a chance, you're going to find it's probably really going to make a big difference in your creativity too.